Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Let's ready to go? Yeah. All right. Let's light it up. Cool. All right, guys. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night, depending on where you're at. It's still, uh, what is it? It's still morning for me. It's evening for James. That's right. Yeah. Almost quitting time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm halfway through my day. You're just ending your day. But I appreciate you joining me today for this uh, live broadcast for uh, the CoSpaces EDU community. My name, my name is uh, Mike Facano. I'm one of the CoSpaces ambassadors, and today I've got with me James McCrary here. You want to introduce yourself, James? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Um, glad that y'all could uh, join us today. Um, I am from Louisiana. I love technology. I love education. And I absolutely love Coast Spaces. It's one of my favorite tools in the whole wide world. Um, so thank you, Michael, for having me today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm from Hawaii. Beautiful state of Hawaii. <laughs> I can't. Is it snowing where you are, James? No. We, we, oh, too bad. Our, we have, our seasons are hot and less hot. That's, <laughs> that's what we get. That's what, it's currently raining. And I think Same for us. If I have to look at my, yeah, we're at about six, like high sixties right now. So, <laughs> our, nice. our, Us too. yeah, our Christmases are not. Um, we get a well, white Christmas like every ten years, every fifteen, years, oh. maybe, something like that. Keep so, bearing your toes. That's that's <laughs> right. Yeah, we have fake snow at our school. We're gonna tomorrow's our last day, so we're doing fake snow tomorrow. We're gonna have the fake nice. snow machines uh, out in front of the school, so that should be pretty fun. And the kids nice. absolutely love it. Well, and the, I guess the adults do too. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're, we're all kid, kids at heart, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, so I got James here with us today because we're, we're doing some live demos this week of uh, the new Merge Cube add-on for Coach Spaces. Um, earlier this week, I did a live demo of the basics, and today I've got James here with me. He's he's created a pretty cool uh, Merge Cube space, turning the cube into a, a die combination lock, and I, I asked him to, to join us in this live demo to... Um, Show us how he created it and uh, walk us through that process. He says he's broken it down into 10 steps. 10, that's right. 10, 10, 10 easy steps to no, a die No, 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 I didn't say easy. <laughs> well, it is. I honestly are. If, I, I will say I'm, I'm a self-taught programmer, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. So we'll put it that way. <laughs> awesome. Um, and and he's, he's got a, you have a lesson plan that, you, that you've broken it down into. Yeah, well, well. yeah. I'll share that. Yeah, I've got a... Yeah. Um, I've got a, uh, it's really a step-by-step -step guide on creation and really kind of where this came out of was, um, a mutual friend of ours, Brian Costello is really big into co-spaces too. Yeah. Uh, he's also really big. Shout out to Brian. Shout, Shout out, out to Brian. Brian. Yeah. And he's also really big into like digital breakouts. Like he's created these, these games in co-spaces that are nearly impossible to get out of. And, um, <laughs> when the merge cube add on came around, I kind of started messing around with the idea of how can I create these digital locks that can be used in a real world environment. And I just would come back to it every now and then. And then I saw that there was a need. We have a little back channel that we talk uh, to each other on in a group. And somebody asked about it. It's like, well, you know, I've got this thing brewing and I've just needed to polish it up a little bit. And actually, I got some help to finish that up from a few people in that group. And so it's currently it's being shared in the gallery under um, the die, die combination log. I think it's actually under STEM is where I believe it's sitting at. But it's a really good use of a, a augmented reality representation of a real world application with breakout EDU. So it's really fun. Um, and it really is once you kind of understand how it's created it just goes really smooth um, from start to finish so we're going to do that today awesome. i think that we probably have enough time to get through the entire build of it um and if not you know the the directions are there and of course the, these directions on our google doc so i may be making edits to it as we go especially because I make mistakes and I'm sure there are some mistakes in that doc. So I'll edit that as we go. And I included some pictures in it to kind of explain, especially on the coding aspect that needs some explanation. And then uh, I'll probably get some rationales on why I did something because anybody that's been in co-spaces or coding and stuff, you know that there's more than one way to 
accomplish yeah. a goal in coding. And so I'll, I'll talk about the reasons why I did what I did and why I made the choices I did. Um, and a lot of my choices yeah. came out of a necessity to try to create a good user experience, but based on my limitations as a programmer and designer, um, I tried to go as simple as possible. So um, with that being said, Yes, let's, let's jump right in. I just wanted to let the audience know that if you're watching live on the YouTube page, um, there's a chat box off to the side. Feel free to use that to say hi to us. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be monitoring the, the chat box while James is sharing, and I'll, I'll uh, pass on any questions to him if you guys have any. Um, this broadcast will be recorded uh, definitely after we're done, and it will be posted up on YouTube. So feel free to watch it again, share it with your colleagues, and uh, don't forget to... Uh, Give us a shout out and share your thoughts and ideas with this using the hashtag CoSpacesEDU on Twitter. And uh, join the uh, the CoSpacesEDU community on Facebook as well. We've got a pretty active community over there. Um, so again, if you have any questions, toss them in the, the chat box on the YouTube page. And uh, with that, yeah, I'll hand it over to James. He's going to share his screen and uh, walk us through how to create that die combination lock. All Go right, for it, James. So uh, so the first thing is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you um, kind of what it looks like. Um, let's see here. I'm going to move my microphone too. Um, as you can see here. So I'll click here and it'll take us to this. And now I got to remember the combination I put in this thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this wrong. Oh. Uh, oh, you got uh, it. You guys see it's, it's blinking green, which means it's... Oh. Uh, yeah. Back up, I got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, so I got it wrong. So, and I won't necessarily try again, again. but I think you'll you'll get the point. Um, actually, no, I ain't gonna try one more time. I think I know what it is. Oh man. Um, okay, this is the last time. I got this one. Uh, if I can find the six, there we go. There it is. Um, cool. Oh, there we go. He did it. I did it. I did it. So you can see when you when you actually get to the end of this, you can actually put your context and information right there. Um, so what 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 would be the like? What was your idea behind creating this? Like, what what purpose is it going to serve for you? So the purpose was. Um, anybody that's done like breakout edu before knows that uh, locks and combination locks are like they're an integral part of um, the process and so what will happen is in order to obtain this code before they even get here they'll have to accomplish some series of tasks or seek out something and so really what breakout edu does is it, um, it invokes collaboration critical thinking problem solving and so this is just another way that you can do a quick uh, combination so you can lock information inside of a digital realm so that they have to know the code. So they have to solve something else before they even get there to get to either the final product or they get the next clue or the next piece of information. So um, it's just a way cool. to kind of merge um, analog and digital realities. Once, once you create something like this, you could always remix it. And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, change the code a little bit to change the, the yeah, combination yeah. or whatever, and then yeah, reuse I'll, it. And I'll show you all that too. I'll show you how to change the combination. And the die is something that's really easy to do. And I'd use a four digit combination. You can do up to six, or you can actually yeah. not even use the die. You could use, if you wanted to, you could do a Rubik's cube and use the Rubik's cube Ooh. digitally to try to figure it out. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that um, to, in order to number one, as a, educator it's something that's really inexpensive for you to to do um, where you can keep redoing it instead of having to have a lock and then maybe the lock doesn't work and you got to break your box or break the lock yeah because because essentially what, what you've created i mean it's not necessarily the numbers that matter but it's choosing the the right, right. the right side right it's, it's a pattern of sides so you can yeah. make those sides whatever you want you can make them whatever you want yeah. create the, the order Cool. Yeah, you can also make it such that um, if it's a sequential thing, um, so let's think in terms of like um, when you have standardized tests on reading comprehension, you had to put um, sequence of events in order, <coughs> logical order, those type things. You can make it 
that. So it's not just numbers. You have to actually go in sequence with what the storyline involves. And if you go out of sequence and yeah. you got to start over. So there's a lot of different ideas and different ways you can include other curriculum besides even just the numbers. Um, but then the die just seemed really, because obviously six mm -hmm. sided merge cube, six sided die, yeah. just, uh, it's perfect. To start from there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let me show you, um, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and let's just create it from scratch. So obviously when you go to create this, you want to select as a merge cube space. Um, this just keeps things really simple and you can see there's our cube. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start, um, by just operating in one scene. If you've done co-spaces before, you know there's multiple scenes that you can create. You can see it right here. But we're just going to do the first scene for right now. And I'm actually going to call this scene. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name it. And this is a good habit to get into when you're going to be using something in co-spaces to code. Go ahead and name it when you create it because you'll forget to do it later and you'll try to go back and remember what you called it. But Go ahead and name it as you create it. So I'm going to call this one home. All right. So in my home space, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create this die. Uh, but the first thing you have to do is you can kind of see that our, our cube is flat against the plane. And we need to actually raise it up for this next part. So depending on what device you're in, you need to unlock it. You can either right click or double click it. And once you unlock it, you get all the familiar options. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to raise it. And it's this button right here. We'll just click and hold it. We're going to raise it up. And I kind of equate this to like getting your oil change. When you go to get your oil change, they raise it up in the air so they can operate underneath it more easily. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to raise it up so we can get to this bottom right here uh, much more easily. So, in fact, I may raise it up a little bit more. There we go. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. All right. So our next step is we're going to skin this merge cube. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. But the one that I find just works the best is by using from the library in the building blocks is a cuboid. And the reason I use this cuboid as opposed to like taking six different panels and aligning them up um, is because Number one, I'm not that good at lining them up. And number two, whenever you put um, those type of 3D assets together that are independent and you try to hit that seam, it doesn't come out nearly as crisp. So I cheat a little bit and I just use the cuboid. And so I'm going to drag it to drag it up. That's, a, that's a smart cheat. I, I, I thought you were creating individual sides and lining it up. You no, know, that's exactly that's what exactly I was doing. Aren't you impressed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this, this is an um, idea. This is uh this is just because I did try it before. I tried it with the different panels and I noticed that it was kind of glitchy when you turned it and that just didn't give a good experience. And so the next thing is I'm going to move it into position. So that's going to take a little bit of man manipulation. I'll move around to see how much space do I have. There we go. And, and the cube is gone, ladies and gentlemen. What an amazing magic trick. <laughs> like that. And in fact, oh. <laughs> I, may, I may make it go a little bit bigger just to make sure that all the sides are covered. It's cool. I, right. it, I like the idea of the cuboid because you could make the cube bigger than the merge cube, right? Yeah. It's and and I actually, cool and it. I like to do that. I like to make it larger because you can make sure that there's complete, like this occlusion type, and that's probably not the right word, but it's, it's masking the entire cube during the process. Yeah. So, um, and what it, what it mask, would it, would it matter? Like if you're holding the cube in your hand and your fingers are covering the sides, would it, does the cuboid matter what side it is in order to cover up your fingers? Does that make no, a difference? No, not really. Um, what will right. happen is when you hold it, like it's going to look like your fingers are kind of into it a little bit. Inside, so, yeah. Yeah. And so another thing that I like to do when you're building these things is constantly play it. Constantly play it and yeah, see what it looks yeah. like from step to step. Because what will inevitably happen is if you continuously work on it without checking that, you're going to get 20, 30 uh, changes down the road and realize mm -hmm. that, Oh man, I needed to make that change l much longer ago because now I got to go back and edit all these things. So test those things as much as possible. And I, I don't necessarily do it with every change that I make, but I do it with 
the ones that I'm uncertain with, like this right here, like what you're saying with, does it look like it's actually really there? So you want to kind of teeter that balance of oversized versus what you're actually holding. And you can find this nice little balance um, if you, as long as you use this little handy play button up here. Um, so the next thing, and this is, this is so, this is, this is where it gets just, just ridiculously easy. Um, for the dots, I use the building blocks and I use flats and I just do circles. And this is where it just gets ridiculous. I don't upsize it at all. What I do is I'm going to double click on it. And I am actually going to change the material, but in really just changing the color. And then I'm going to orbit this. So we're going to use this tool right here. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And now I'm going to raise it up kind of move it into position. So this takes a little trickery. So you can see it disappeared. There we go. So this, so this is the painstaking part. Yes. <laughs> yes. And for yeah, those that are, uh, that are really sticklers for design and stuff like that, you're probably going to get aggravated with me when I'm doing this. Um, could you, could you like set this up in another app as and then import it as an image? Oh would that, yes, would that be easier. Have you tried yeah. that or? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, there are uh, parts that I use in my cube that are um, essentially I call it cheating for skins because mm -hmm. um, if there's a type of skin or design or something that is not available in Code Spaces, I go to some oh. other app or some other design element and I'll create it and throw it in. So yeah, you're probably right. It may actually be even like super fast to create it in another. Uh, thing, but what I found was that the circles were just like the perfect size coming right out of the bat. That it just mm. looked like it was cool. it was good. Um, now, before I go on and I do another side, there's two things. Uh, first, I want to actually select both of these together, and I want to group them. So how we do that is we click on the first object, which is our circle, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the next one. And when I do this. I can double click and I'm going to group them. And the reason you want to group these two is because now when I move this cube, it's going to move this dot with it. When you're dealing with as many dots as we're going to be dealing with, um, it can get a little crazy. So um, if you did create this in another program and, and import it in, that probably would solve some of that. Um, but, you know, Either way you want to do it. Um, the second thing is, uh, this is something that I found out because I didn't really know before I started creating this, that um, the sides, it's not necessarily this sequence around it, but it's the opposite sides that matter. And what I was, uh, what I was told on my, during my research is that the opposite sides, the sum of two opposite sides, always equal up to seven. So if I've got one over here, that means that over here I'm going to have six. Now, one of the little cheats that I found was that it was easier to actually just do these in sequence of one, two, three, four, five, and six, um, because you can actually um, mimic what you're doing and help align the different sides of the cube. So what I'll do, is I'm going to go here, load up another circle, change that to black. Let's raise this up, move this back. All right, so let's get right on top of the cube. All right. How far I never knew on? that uh, that little trick about the two sides of a dice. Yeah, I didn't know that either. It's, and I'm sure that there's like a proper sequence for. Um, the other, like the other sides, like the two has to be in a certain relation to the one or something like that. But, you know, I don't know. But as I'm building this, oh, no. I, go ahead. Uh, when I'm building this, uh, so I've got this dot in position. I'm just going to select it. I'm going to copy and I'm just going to paste. And I like to use hotkeys. Uh, so I'm on a Mac. So Command C, Command V. Um, and then I can drag that out. I just drag it straight down and I drag it straight across. But the same way that I did before, I'm going to select all three of these objects. And 
and I'm going to group. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of check and see, make sure everything is grouped together. Yeah, you can see how it's all stuck together now. The one and the two is there. And so I'm just going to kind of continue on. Um, I'm going to do three and let's do three over here. Why not? So change my material. And I know I said before to label your assets as you're going. Um, we're not labeling these because these aren't true assets, not what we're going to be using in coding. Um, these are basically just visuals. So there we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and line that circle up for all those people that really want to be detailed. I'm going to go down, I'm going to go across. Copy that one. I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to somewhat get it in order. Oh, look at that. I need to lower those two up there. We'll come back and do that later. But same thing. I'm going to select these items. So this this is so like what you're doing. So I don't I don't think there's a grouping option on the iOS. There is not. There's not a grouping. Right? So, there's not a grouping yet on iOS. And there's actually two things in this project that you'll need to do it on the web version. Uh, the first is the grouping aspect, and the second is a part of the script coding. Uh, yeah. But don't worry, we don't have very much of the script based coding. It's it's already created for you. I can share it with you. Um, but those are the two things. But we, we both know code spaces is um, they're never sitting sitting on their hands. Uh, I would imagine that those things would in the near future possibly come out. Um, just like the last the last update that brought um, the video upload to iOS and same thing with, with image upload. So in audio, audio was the big thing. Um, all right. So uh, let me get my sides here. I got three sides done. So now four, four needs to go opposite of three. So let's just, uh, let's go ahead and do this. And this is probably the most monotonous part of it. Let me adjust that. There we go. Get to where I can see this. There we go. All right. So for those of you just uh, joining us, James is uh, creating the sides of his di dice right now, die, using some building blocks. And once you get it sort of aligned where you want it, it goes pretty quick. So it's just about getting that, that first one up there. Nice. So now, same thing with this. I'm going to group them all. Okay, those are grouped. Um, so our next one is going to be five. So that would be below. So I'm going to scoot in here a little bit so I can actually see what I'm doing under the hood here. And this one... Let's see here. Get that aligned. There we go. All right. There we go. I'm just going to let it hover over the top of it. Okay, so let's take that out there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. Working on the underside. That's the that's the hardest part. It's the <laughs> hardest part. And actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I just realized something while I was doing this. Uh, yes, since, yes, yes, yes. I know what since, you're going to do. Yeah, since we've grouped this already, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it. Uh -huh. And hopefully I'll... Hopefully all of my 
Now, right, are you rotating the cube right now, or the or are you, are you so, rotating the cuboid or the or the merge cube? So I'm actually I'm orbiting um, on the trackpad uh, the environment itself, but I did right before this I did orbit the cube upwards. So this is another cool. thing when you unlock it, you can select the cube, which is now it's not just the cuboid; it's the cuboid plus all the circles that we have grouped yeah. to it. So you so, grouped them together. So it's, cause, so it's basically one object. Yes, yes, they are basically one object. So now we should have a little bit yeah. easier of a time. Yeah, that definitely makes it easier than yeah. trying to angle yourself underneath the cube. <laughs> yeah, of course, if you ever go and get your oil changed and they raise up your car yeah. and then they're like, you know what, we need a better angle. Let's flip it up on the <laughs> side. That may not be... May not not be recommended. Your, yeah, that's <laughs> not recommended. No. All right. All right, so in this one, hopefully they all sort of line up. Yeah, from a distance, it looks like it's five, which goes that we're well, it looks like it's a line. So, um, okay, I'm going to group those. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to rotate it back down because I want to make sure that the orientation is like it was from the beginning. It's going to make things a lot easier on the back end. So I've got five down there. And so now I've got to do the last one, which is the six. So let's in our last circle here. And we're going to rotate it up. 90 degrees. The circles are almost done. Circles are almost oh, done. And this is this really is the most meticulous because when we get into like the code and stuff, the code actually goes much quicker because uh, copying and pasting and duplicate. Like duplicate is like my favorite thing. <laughs> but for all of you out there, his die combination lock space is in the gallery, so you don't have to go through all this trouble. <laughs> no, you don't. No, no, no. This Unless you is want really to. good no, tips. And, and to be honest, I'm going to be a little selfish here. I'm kind of hoping that somebody's watching this and they think, man, there's a much better way to do it than what he's doing. <laughs> and they let me know. Because then it may help generate some some new ideas. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so now. All right, so. Just go down all the way. Halfway. Cross. And I'm sure that there's probably I can probably do a snap to grid and make this um, make this really yeah. really work. <coughs> All right. All right. So now it is entirely grouped. Mm -hmm. um, now our next thing that we have to do is we have to drop in we have to drop in some essentially invisible walls because right now if we just play this nothing's going to happen you're just going to except for the cube being there we need to actually create some triggers on this and when you create the cuboid the cuboid does not have independent sides where you can code each independent side because it is an asset in of itself so basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a wall and remember how I said that I used the cuboid because lining up those edges was difficult. Well, we're going to create walls, but we're going to all, we're going to create them and make them invisible so that you won't ever see them. The only thing the invisible walls do is work as a trigger so that when you click on that invisible wall, which like, let's say there's one here in front of the six, when you click on it, it's going to represent that you're clicking on the six. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. So, so the wall, this invisible wall would be, layered on top of yeah, the cube yeah. right in the dots. And cool. I just use like the square. So I'm going to use the square and oh, did it drop in? There we go. And I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to orbit it up. Oh. Let's go back. That's another trick too. When you're doing the orbit, um, if you lit off of it and you grab it again, it resets how much your difference right. is. So I just moved it 90 degrees in one turn. If you let go of it and it's not perfectly straight, just click the undo button and it'll bring you back to where you started from. It's just a whole lot easier that way. 
So the next thing is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scale it up. Let's move it up here. Scale it. And I'm going to make this a little bit oversized, just a smidge, um, because I want to make sure that if somebody were to click on any part of this side of the cube, that it would react. So that looks pretty good. Um, now that I got this in place, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to name this. So I put this on, ooh, let me see. This is why I should have done it before. All right. So this is number six. All right. So I am going to call this side six. And under code, I want to use it in code blocks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this right here. I'm going to leave this as yellow um, because it makes it so that I can see it. And I'm just going to come back and I'll edit all six sides um, when I get them all in place. So then I just go to that opposite side. We're right here. And I'm going to use the orbit tool in here too because it's going to give me a perfect... 90 degrees because you can click this blue down here but it doesn't tell you the degrees and i'm just not good enough to um <laughs> to make it work like it's supposed to or get it lined up all right so now it's that one that one to the other side i'm going to move over here <laughs> so we have uh I, I believe his name is jesus on uh, oh, twitter jesus you know jesus oh yeah he's he's messaged me he said he said, uh, "If you could, you could create a surface with six dots and duplicate and then delete some of them rather than recreating." Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good point. That's, yeah. a, that's a smart way to to do the six sided first, yeah. and you just duplicate the six sided, and then remove the dots that you don't need for the next side and rinse and repeat. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a that's a cool idea. Where, Thanks, Jesus. Where, that. where were you at a few seconds ago, Jesus? No, why couldn't you tell us that in the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> no, that that's good. We struggle through it, so we appreciate it a little bit more. Like I, I hear that, and it sounds like, oh, that's not that big a deal. But that's a really good. Um, <laughs> that's a really good um, kind of hack or shortcut. All right. So it looks like that is lined up. Um, okay. Good. So next thing I'm going to do is. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make them all invisible because I have to go back because what I did not do is I did not take my advice and I did not label them as I went. So obviously I can't see necessarily what side they're on. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to double click and under material, the way you do that is the opacity. Um, the higher the percentage of opacity means that it is uh, more solid. Um, take down the opacity and then it becomes see-through. So I'm going to, and in fact, I'm going to have to cheat here again here in a little bit. Um, I'm going to double click that. And this is not side six, side two. Make sure the code is on. Yeah, perfect. All right. So same thing over here. The material, opacity is clear. This is side one. Material. All right. Side four. Work my way around here. All right. That one's already labeled appropriately. Yeah. <laughs> you did the first one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And three. Oh, I don't even know why I pressed that white. There we go. Oh, let's go back. Side number five. All right. So the next thing is I want to group these to the cuboid as well. So um, I'm actually going to just backtrack, even though I made this invisible. I'm going to make this a little there so I can see it. I'm just going to move this out of the way for now because I need a part of the cuboid to click on. So click on that, that, that. So I've the three sides that I can see, 
I've grabbed those and I've grouped them. And I'm going to slide over here and I'm going to select the cuboid in these two sides and group that. I'm going to go underneath, group that. And so, now, so, so grouping it, they, they still retain their their yes. side name. That correct. So will distinguish them in the code blocks. That the code is correct. Cool. Yes. All right. So now we're going to take that material, take it back down to zero. I'm going to select that one, select that one, double click, and I'm going to group. All right. So now, drum roll, we should actually be able to move this. Oh, actually, did it work? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, I, I forgot we had to we had to move these kind of independent of each other. So I'm going to ray. There we go. That should be what perfect. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and I'm gonna lock our cube back. All right. Just get it somewhat aligned. Go. That looks good. And boop. Yeah. And sometimes I notice this. Um, you can see how it doesn't go down all the way. Yeah. Um, so what I do is I'll cheat a little bit and I'll just raise the cube up to kind of make up that differential. Um, on certain variations of the cube that I've done, uh, it has allowed me to do that. Is, is, that, has, is that because the invisible panel, that's what's laying it flat against the... You know, I don't know because I, I, I've done that invisible panel like that um, in various ways and it doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. Um, of course, there could be something that I'm not, it could be a variable I'm not, I'm not thinking of. All right. So now we've got all the kind of the tedious stuff done. We have our actual build complete. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually duplicate this scene two more times. So I'm going to Duplicate and duplicate. Um, and I'm going to change the names of these. The first one that I'm going to call it is going to be called Game Over. And the second one can be called Game Complete. So um, at the very end, you if you, let me hop back over here. Um, this is essentially the Game Complete congratulations scene. And the game over scene is obviously the game over scene. And the reason that I built these the way that I did um, instead of building the other scenes is because the other scenes involve a lot of code. So I'm going to do a lot of those code and these don't have that much. I don't want to go back and delete a whole bunch of code. So yeah. um, what I'm going to do is on, and you could even take a shortcut. You could just do game over and then duplicate it to game complete and edit it. But um, there's not a whole lot to this portion of it. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to come back and start from the top and we're going to build our button. Okay. So our button is from here. If I click here to play again, um, this is our home screen and there's our start button. Click here to begin. So the way that I built that, it's just another cuboid. Um, you could use a text panel. You could use anything because it can be coded. But I like to use cuboid because I like to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional shape, um, a little bit deeper. And so you can see when I drop it in, it's got these kind of um, three-dimensional spherical arrows. So I can make those adjustments like so. All right. You could do that with a wall too, right? Or like a yeah, texture. yeah. You could, I could. To be honest, I could put, I could put a cat in here. <laughs> yeah. I could put, yeah. Uh, you could put anything in there. Any object will work because um, you're going to label it and use that as the trigger. So, yeah. um, so I'm going to just move this on over, like so. Okay, and I'm going to adjust my material on this because I want it to kind of stand out. So I'm just going to. Um, Let's not do that one because that gets in the way of text. Um, let's just do that. Perfect. All right. So um, the next thing is I've got this, I got this button sitting here. Um, and I want to add some text. And this is why it may be easier to do the text panel and stuff like that. But I'm real particular. I want 
I want, I want that kind of three dimensional depth. So mm -hmm. you can actually take, and I'm going to actually go ahead and call this start. Okay. And I do want to use it in code blocks. All right. So now I'm going to add, I'm just going to add some text. Oh, come on. There we go. And my text is going to be since it starts a little bit bigger. Perfect. I'm going to change the material because I need it to stand out just a little bit. There we go. And I'm actually going to expand this out just a little bit. There we go. So let me go back here, make this a little bit bigger. There we go. All right. So I'm also going to call this start text. And I want to use this in code blocks. And the reason I do this is because now you can, you'll be able to, when we do this code, you'll be able to click on here or here to make the, the code work in the next sequence. All right. So now I'm going to go to game over and I'm going to add in something very similar. So let's go back here. Copy. Let's go here. And let's paste. All right. All right, so my text, and I'm going to do something simple, and I'm going to show you uh, what I did. Um, get my text the way that it shows up. Um, all right, so there's game over, and then I'm going to come here, I'm going to paste. Oh. I'm going to change the text to rats but you can also this is where you can put in your information and so you can adjust uh these things so let's say i've got a whole mess of text that i need to put in or something like that then i can just adjust it however i want so i'm going to come back i'm going to change this to rats text i'm going to change this to rats then I'm going to go back into game over, change that to game over text. And game over. We'll call that button. All right. Now I've got all these things coded. Um, or actually I got them prepared to code. Um, our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to make a duplicate of home. And I'm going to actually go ahead and change the name of this scene to scene one. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave it there for a second. I'm actually not going to do anything in it just yet. There we go. I'm actually going to come back to home and I'm going to start coding inside of here. So we're going to press code. And let's see here. Da, 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 da. Oh, there we go. All right. So we're going to apply uh, two bits of co block code. Uh, the first one is going to be under events, and it's going to be when X is clicked. So it's this one right here. And actually, I'm going to. I forgot one little step in here, and that is in parallel. So um, anytime that I have, and you know I have these two things, start and this little button right here, these two things, um, I actually want to run these in parallel. And the reason that I do that is because sometimes it gets a little quirky on which one you're clicking. Some of Sometimes it won't work, but if you run it in parallel, it won't matter which one you're pressing. So I'm going to go to control, and I'm going to find run in parallel. There we go. And so I'm going to say when 
the start text is clicked and then I'm going to actually click on that and I'm going to copy that code, drag it down here. So see, both of these are going to run in parallel when the start, so either start or start text is clicked. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and look for under control. Uh, we're going to look for go to scene. There we so go. For that, so for that, that parallel. So that's, so what that means is it's looking for one of those two things happening. At That's the same correct. Time. Yeah. Either one of those two things can happen. That is correct. And we're going to be using parallel um, for our different sides as well. Any side of scene one, two, three, and four for our four digits. And the reason being is because um, if you have it in a certain order, sometimes it's like it won't respond. So let's say that we've got number one right up here. Okay. Under run, uh, no run parallel, but the side number one is up here and we code that. And in, on that scene, you click side six. Well, it may not respond the way you want it to because you're not selecting the first one in the sequence. So right. we run into parallel. So they're all like at the very top and ready to go. All right. So um, when start text, we want to go to scene. We want to go to scene one. Scene one is where we start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this code and we're going to go down into our game over click code code blocks and i'm going to paste that in there and so we're going to go to either you can go to scene one or if you wanted to go back home you can either one and then i'm going to come here code box code all right and so when Congrats or congrats text is selected. And then we go back to game over when game over or game over button. So now um, what will happen is I will select start and then it will take me to scene one. Um, and from game over, I can click on the game over button and it's going to take me back to scene one and by, and the same thing for the game complete. So it kind of just resets the game back to scene one. And so in our scene one, what we're going to do is we're going to do co blocks as well. And remember, we're going to run all these in parallel. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to, in fact, actually, you know what, let me just go ahead and paste. Um, so I'm going to say, well, actually, let me go ahead and add all these because, you know, we have six sides. So I've got two sitting right here and these are called tasks. So when you're running in parallel, and let me make this full screen so we don't need to look at the cube right now. We want to run in parallel six tasks because we have six sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a task. Add a task. Add a task. Two, three, four. Five. Okay. That should be enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm going to copy those there we go drop that in drop that in and that should be the last one one two three four five six yes okay and so um right now if you wanted to you can go ahead and you can set these um but it gets kind of difficult um, to set this when you don't have all the other scenes built. Um, so, but what we can do is we can say when side one and go to the second one, when side two, go to the third one, when side three, when side four, five and six. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy or I'm going to duplicate um, this scene, um, this really right here, this go to scene doesn't necessarily matter because we don't have the other scenes created yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate that and duplicate that. So now I have four of these scenes and this aligns with my four digits of my combination. Um, but I need to go ahead and I need to rename these scenes because that's going to get confusing. Um, I'm going to name this one scene two name this one scene three I'm gonna name this one scene four all right 
So starting back at the top on scene one, um, let's go ahead and let's pick our combination. It's just easier to do that first. So, all right, Michael, you tell me a number. Give me one number. Uh, four. Four. All right. So when side four is clicked, we're going to want to go to scene two. Okay. Um, okay. On these other ones, though, all these other ones, side one is an incorrect response. So yep. we want to go to game over, not game complete. So game, game over. over, game over, game over, game over. So side four is the correct. Is the correct response. response. Yes. Correct so then, yeah. And so then when they select this correct response, then it's going to go to scene two. The scene two, right? So on scene two, Going to go to our code. Uh, give me another one. I'll let you choose this one. Uh, two. Two. All right. So for two, we're going to go, and that's going to progress to scene number three. So for everything else, it's game over. Game over. Cool. Game over. Not, not, not that hard. No, once it's once you get it all set up, yeah, yeah. It, like you can see now it's snowballing down. And I'm going to get into some like little little kind of detail option or little uh, details and some stuff I designed and why I did it here when once we get through this. All right, so now we're going to go to scene three because that's the next progression. All right, next number. Five. Five. Okay, so five. And then that's going to take us to scene four. And we're going to say game over, game over, game over, and game over. All right. So we do something a little different in scene four because um, there, the next scene to progress is not scene four, obviously. We want it to go to game complete. So give me your final number. Uh, four. All right, and you are going to be tested on this uh, later <laughs> to see if you remember <laughs> oh, your combination. All right, so um, so we're going to go to use this to game complete, right? Because if you've gotten yep. this far and you get that last digit correct, then your game is complete and you're good to go. Which and means you could always you could always yeah. do little scenes for a shorter yeah. combination, or more scenes for a longer combination, and just repeat Ab steps. Up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, if you wanted to, you could literally do, if you wanted to do a, you know, 26 character um, <laughs> thing. So if it was, you know, I don't know, and you just wanted to be a little, <clears throat> you could do that to somebody. Um, all right. So game over. All right. So now essentially this is really complete with, no, that is it. So we have actually finished uh, yeah. our project. Now, um, I'm going to actually come over to my iPad and let's see if... Um, let's test it out. Yeah, we'll test it out. And you're going to see something that really stood out to me the first time that I, um, that I really tested this. Let's see. Okay. Come on now. All right. Let me click on home here. Space 39. All right. So... See if I can get this to show up here. Of course. Come on, space yeah. 39. That's right. <laughs> it's just got to refresh itself. Yeah, it just takes a little bit. But while we're waiting for that, I'll, t I'll talk you through what I experienced. Um, when I, and actually I'll go ahead and I'll open up my, my space right here. And I'll play it. When it was really easy to find out when you started, like if you made a mistake, right? So you click mm -hmm. here and I click here. Well, it gave you the game over, right? But wasn't what was not very apparent was how do I know that I'm actually clicking the right thing? And so this is where this little thing came in. You saw that little green little flash? Yeah, um, the green flash. Yeah. yeah. And... I played around with the different timings of those things and stuff like that. Oh, and look, there's space 39. Oh, no, that's on the wrong one. <laughs> I must get my screens all mixed up here. Um, no, still not up. That's fine. So let me show you what that code looks like. For... You, can, uh, you, can, you, can, you can test it without AR on your 
in your web browser. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which play? There you go. Oh, yeah. Is that cool? I didn't notice that. No, That's no, awesome. No, just just uh, stay on that screen there. Go back to that. And go That's back. Last. Yeah. So just use your mouse. Oh. Move it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. So. You oh, can but see, but you in in here you you see the scenes. Yeah, know, yeah. The AR, you don't see the scenes. Yeah. Right. So what will happen is like um, when I click on start and it takes me to the second scene. If the combination, I can't remember what the first one was, but if I click on four, six, see, and... <laughs> see what it did. It went to game over. But um, let's go back. All right. Click on. Click on start. start. All right. And oh, four. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot about that little start thing. We got to come back and take that out here in a second. But uh, so, what was the? Uh, uh, <laughs> what was your combination? Four. Four. Okay. So when you're in AR, you don't know if what you selected was correct. Now That's, we, we yeah, are cheating yeah. right now because the transport is down here, right here. And I'm going to tell yeah. you how to clean that up here in a second too. Um, but let me go back and let me let me while we're waiting for that to refresh because uh, I do want to see it in AR. I'm going to come back here. I'm just going to delete that out on each one of those oh because those because you copied it into the scenes yeah 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 so we'll take that out take that out there we go okay now i can live with myself again um <laughs> so what i did was i changed up the code a little bit so let's go back to scene one and we'll click on the code and let's expand it um and let's see which one is correct so um side number four is the correct response and so what I did to create this visual response is um, I wanted a color to show up, but when I had that color just show up, I didn't want it to just stay there. I wanted it to actually mm. do something in sequence and then change to the next scene. So, um, but I didn't just want the color. I wanted actually, you saw it like it almost flashed. So what I'm yeah. doing is I'm actually changing the scale of the side. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm taking that, remember that invisible uh, mm -hmm. side that we created. I'm taking that side and I'm, I'm, as soon as you click it and it's the correct response, it shrinks down immediately, but then it, it changes color and then it starts to expand and then it goes to the next scene. So here's how we oh, do wow. that. So we set the scale and the scale is under transform. So we're going to, um, do, 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 do. where are you at? It is a set scale. I know you're in, there. We go. So we're going to set the scale of side four. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cheat and I'm going to tell you what uh, the one that I picked. I just picked point one because it shrunk it all the way down. Now, this so what's going to happen in this sequence? This side number four, this invisible wall, is going to shrink down to one tenth of its size as soon as you click it. And the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and change the color of it while it's small. So we're going to do that from actions. So we're going to set the color of side number four. And we're going to set it to, I like to customize the color. Um, I chose green just because, well, I don't know why. So Green's good. Yeah, <laughs> green's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'll also, um, the solid green um, for, for my purposes, I didn't really like how that looked. And so I'm going to set the opacity too, and you can do that under actions as well. So yeah. I'm going to set the opacity of side number four, side number four, and I'm going to set it to somewhere around 40%, 35, 40% is pretty good. Um, and then the last thing that I need to do is it's now it's small and it's green. I need to upscale it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to go back to our transform and I'm going to scale this, but I'm not going to use the same code, this set scale, because um, when you set the scale of it, it's what it's going to happen is it's going to go from little to big instantaneously. You yeah. need to be able to see it grow. So we need to be able to uh, manipulate the time too. So there's another uh, one inside of there that's scale side four. Um, and I'm going to say by 70 times, and I'm going to say much shorter than one second. I'm going to go to 15th of a second. And so now what happens is when I play, and what do you say? Are, or it's four, right? Four, yeah. 
Saw what yeah. happened there. Yeah. So, yeah. A little blink, so a little blink a little of blink. a green square. Right. And so you can, you can take that and you can apply that to, um, to every side that you want to do. Um, and you can, uh, you can manipulate that however you want. You can do colors or you can have it do a picture or now you can have it do the video if you wanted to. Um, so if you really wanted to just do something really crazy, you could do that as well. Um, cool. the last little bit, and this is what took me the longest amount of time because this transport right here really kind of gets in the way of your progress. So if you're an educator or you're a student and you're building this for a breakout, well, the kids that are, are really, really smart and savvy with coast buses, they're going to know I'm going to go all the way to find out what this thing is. So they'll just click the transport, right? So we don't want them to do that. And the only way that I found to do that is actually inside of script. Code. script. Yeah. So, so, um, so that, so that transport that shows up in AR mode too? Yes, it does. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it shows up in AR mode, like right on the screen. And in VR yeah. mode, um, when you actually have it, uh, like wearing a headset, it actually shows up at the bottom. You just look down and it has arrows point wow. to it. So, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that I stole this. Um, and hopefully they don't mind me stealing it. I stole this code um, from Co-Spaces. Um, Co-Spaces, please stop listening now. Thank Stop you. listening now. Um, but that's the beauty of the remix. Like when they make things available yeah. for remix, um, you know, in education, we say steal and stuff like that, but really people make these things available. So um, long-term borrows, like long-term borrow. Yeah. And the, the reason that I stole it is because I didn't know what that asset was called. So mm -hmm. like I call it a transport because like if you're watching YouTube, you got the play button and stuff like that. Um, yeah. It's called a transport. So I didn't know what it was called, but inside of this code, I found out what it was. And so when I found out what it was, I also found the code to make this work. And so here it is. Um, so it is the scene navigation. Um, GUI hides yeah. screen scene navigation. Ah, yeah. Okay. So we set the visibility of the of the scene navigation uh, navigator to false. And false. so now when we play, oops, <laughs> it's gone. Um, now I will also say this. This is something to keep in mind when you start sharing this out. Whatever scene that you're currently on. That's what it's going to put it as. So you need to make sure that you, when you share this, out, yeah, you, you want to make sure that you're on the home screen, then you share it. So, um, Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I see what you because mean. if not, it's going to hop right in the middle of it. Nobody's going to know what to do. Um, now some other things that, um, that I did, and I'm actually working on a new version, um, that's using some really cool rings that go around it. But, my game over that blinks. So let's actually go to, let's go home and let's actually just pull up my um, combination lock. There we go. So I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to take my, I'm going to take my code off because I can do that. All right. So there we go. Okay. So cool. that game over that's blinking, what's really interesting about this is you see what just happened? Mm -hmm. It flipped. It flipped. Whoa. And it's just like, oh, wait, there it is. You know, um, and so I'm actually working on taking this and I'm going to put it over the center. And it's actually going to go in a ring that goes around it. Um, mm. And this right here is just an image. And so I have uh, fonts and I have uh, reproduction rights on fonts. Uh, you can actually check out Adobe stuff. Um, you can actually get rights um, to redistribute on certain types of fonts. And I had this font in there and I literally just typed it in pages and I changed the size and the color. And then I just did a screen capture of it. And then I went into preview and I just eliminated the white out of the background. Yeah. And so it just created a, a PNG. So it's a transparent PNG. And I just uploaded inside of CoSpaces. And then what I did is I was like, well, that that's not enough. I want it to be blinking. And so I'll show you um, the code that I created on that. And if anyone wants it, I can I can absolutely uh, share that out. It's absolutely not proprietary. Uh, but you can see that I set a forever loop from the control. And I set the opacity to zero. And then wait for half a second. And then set the opacity to 100. Wait for five seconds. And then loop it back around to keep going back and forth. So that's 
Um, that's what I did. So if you want it to blink faster, you just change the uh, intervals in between to a lower rate. Um, and if you wanted it to just pulse in and out, you could actually add more of these and you can, um, mm. you can change it so that it just gradually goes up and then back down. Um, that's a, how, how I created it. Cool. And there you have it, folks. It is, uh, your very own combination die or like, you know, like you said, they can just steal it. <laughs> it's in the gallery. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it, it kind of, it, it opens itself up to lots of different possibilities with, you know, creating different kinds of combinations and locks. Yeah. And it's Never really cool interesting. Idea. Like, um, when I saw, when I first saw the Rubik's cube after I started doing this, it's like, man, that's crazy because imagine, you know, you can do a Rubik's cube, a Rubik's cube. Yes. in physically in reality, but if you can do it on the merge cube yeah, and when you solve it, it unlocks it for something. That's really awesome. That's really, really cool. So, uh, even things like that, um, that really just kind of get your juices flowing. And uh, along with this being for combination locks for breakout ED or whatever, um, this is something that's really cool to apply for students that want to share their knowledge with other students, right? So this is another way to show what you know. Okay, well, take this combination lock and mix it up so that it's showing us what you know. So maybe you change the sides um, from being um, the the dots to something else and you had to, you want to create a certain sequence or whatever um, that you want to share out with others. Um, or you just want to use it as part of a demo. Um, it's a really cool way to um, make it interactive, especially. Uh, um, yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. And getting to share it out, you know, this right here, like th this whole share function that CodeSpaces has had for a while, but now it's got the, the remix in it. Um, has been really cool because, I've, and I think you do this too, mm -hmm. uh, having the QR codes just readily available and you just kind of post them up or you, um, you send them home with the, the, the students go home with it on their sheet and their parents can scan it and they can go right in um, and see what they did. It's just a really cool, almost portfolio tool that um, students can use to build on. And it's all thanks to being able to build in the cloud and then be able to share these links out. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much, James. Yeah, no, and it's really awesome. Um, the uh, I tried to keep it under an hour. I do you want to do you want to show them the lesson? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, lesson yeah, yeah. plan that you created. Yeah. We'll and we'll we'll toss that into the, yeah. the Facebook group and share it out on Twitter and all that. All right, and so it's not necessarily like a full. It's like necessarily a full lesson plan. It's actually a it's um, step by step. Guide. It's a step by step on how to, how to create. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, one of the things that we did is we actually took a modification of this and we have a group of students that are creating a, essentially it's a one chapter story. Um, it's a choose your own adventure, like 57 yeah. degrees North. It's actually a continuation of that story, their interpretation of it. Um, so it's, it's becoming really interesting. So, um, and we'll create a lesson plan on that once we're done with how we did, how we did that, uh, cool. both, both with the, the instructions and the complete lesson plan. But if there's anybody that creates um, that takes this combination lock either with a die or something else. If you create a lesson, share that out. We want to, we definitely yeah, want to know see it. Um, because um, if you have something that's really awesome, you've got good success with it, especially if it's using this, I definitely want to know because it makes it easier for me when I'm helping <laughs> teachers lesson plan. So um, yeah, this is here. And um, uh, did I already give you the link? I don't know if I did. I can't remember. That seems like forever ago. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this link and I'm going to send it to my good friend in our side chat. And if you wouldn't mind, um, Oh, you know what? No, I got the, uh, I forgot that I actually had the, the live. We're going to get a little tunnel vision here in a second. So, um, I'm going to paste it right inside of the chat on YouTube. Um, and I'll actually, I'll, I'll tweet it out too. Um, and Michael's really good about tweeting that stuff out too. So I'm sure he will as well. Um, let me move that off the screen. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, there we go. All right. Oh, you're on mute, Mike. Oops. There we go. Noob. And you're back. <laughs> no, I, like for a second, I was like, wait, what did I just do? 
Um, Thank you so much, James. I really appreciate you yeah, walking us through those steps. So, it's, it, so definitely, it, um, it sounds like a really complex thing, but it actually seems pretty easy to do. It's just repetitive. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. just repetitive. Um, and a lot of these things, copy and paste is your friend. Duplicate yep. is your duplicate is your friend. So you don't have to necessarily worry about that. And the most tedious thing was the the dots. But Jesus, yeah. his idea was really great. Start with six and work your way back. Yeah, that's smart. Or even, you know, I had this thought too, that tools like um, like on your iPad, if you take it and let's say you create it inside of, I don't know, Keynote or in Sketch School or whatever you create your sides in, um, when you save it to your camera roll, you can actually edit on the camera roll to make a perfect mm -hmm. square. So then the, all you have to do is upload and then it may make this go even faster than yeah. what that is. Yeah. So that awesome. was a good, that was a good idea. I think I'm going to have to try that on my next one. Um, cause it's actually the same concept, what we're using for our choose, choose your own adventure. The students are creating in something else and they're importing the picture. So I don't know why I didn't think about that. And that's why you're here, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, our, our community definitely has uh, a great ideas and it's yeah. the more we share, the more, the more ideas we gain from each other. So absolutely. That's the best part. Absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, I just want to say thank you again for joining us for this live demo. Really appreciate your your help with that, James. Yeah. And uh, this this video, will, it's it's being recorded, so it'll be available um, up after we we end the live broadcast, and uh, we'll we'll share it through our our channels as well. And um, tomorrow, same time, same place, we'll have Mary Reeves Howard sharing. Uh, so she'll be doing a live demo of her book review with the merge cube add-on really really cool idea so uh check us out tomorrow on youtube as well and join uh join uh, we have a twitter slow chat going on this week with hashtag cospaces edu you can uh, scroll back through my twitter feed at ed technocation for um the questions from earlier this week and uh again thank you thank you so much james really appreciate your help yeah, Here's anytime, more. anytime. And y'all have a good holiday. Yeah, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Same to y'all. All right, you guys take care.